Hello and welcome to this practice today. My name is Karen. Let's start standing with your feet slightly apart, comfortable distance. And spread out your toes. You might like to lift them up and then place them back down again. Feel the earth beneath your feet. So we're freeing up our feet from being bound in shoes, allowing them to expand. Plant your feet into the earth like you're growing roots down deep into the ground. And gently lift up from the crown of your head and stand comfortably. I invite you to close down your eyes and take two deep, slow breaths. Smooth and even. With the exhalation, allowing your body to ground and relax. Gently open the eyes. Let's start to move the body fluidly. So make figure eight patterns with your hips. Bend into the knees and feel the weight distribute across your feet. Drop into a space of being. So let go of the thinking mind, am I doing it right or not? And just flow freely and easily like you're moving through water, like you're sea grass. Let's bring the arms into the movement now, so making figure eight patterns with your arms. And feel free to move at a different pace to me, perhaps moving a little faster if you feel a bit more energized and awake and your body's warm from other activities you've done. You might like to slow down and move very gently and slowly. Feel free to change the levels. Keep the breath moving evenly and smoothly. Just coiling the joints with this free movement. And come back to center. Let's move from side to side. So radiate out, radiate from your navel, reach up to one side, right up to the fingertip. And then over to the other side, initiating the movement from your navel center. Feel free to move in time with your breath. Check in for any parts of the body that feel rigid, for example, the neck, the toes, the wrists, the face and eyes, soften the face and eyes, the throat, the neck, shoulders. And come back to center after that last round. This time cross the shoulder in front and lift the elbow, the forearm up and over. So making the figure eight patterns again, initiate the movement in your hips again. And bring the other arm into the movement now. Moving fluidly, freely. Free the body, free the mind. Move with grace. And come back to center. So let's stand up nice and tall and reach your arms up high. Gentle back bend as you lift the chest, opening skywards. And with your exhalation, let's start to turn to one side, folding forward, and inhale, come up the other side. Open out at the top. Exhale, down one side, forward through the middle, and up the other side, inhale. One more to this side. Let's change the direction now. Exhaling down the other side. Coming through the middle and inhale up the other side. Opening your heart at the top. Strong legs as you come up. Strong core. And with the next 
next exhalation, release your, your arms down. So let's stand at the top of our mat. Stand in Tadasana, mountain pose. Ground your feet, your big toes together and your heels slightly apart. So when you look down, the outside edge of your feet are parallel to each other. Lift up nice and tall, grow your spine tall. With your inhalation, exhale, ground down through your feet. Inhale, take your arms back and up. And exhale, swan dive. Inhale, slide your hands up the legs for a halfway lift to flat back. And exhale, take your right leg back to the lunge. So trying to get the back foot vertical, engaging your, your core here. So the tailbone slightly down and under. And you're hugging the, the legs together through the midline. Gently pulling the lower ribs back. And with the next inhalation, step forward and slide the hands back up the legs for a flat back. Exhale, left leg back and pause here in the lunge. Heart open and bright. On your fingertips to open the heart space, the shoulders back away from your ears. Lifting the back foot vertically. With the next inhalation, stepping forward, slide the hands up the legs. Exhale, fold back in, let go, release your, your neck and your head. And take your hands to your hips and pull back your elbows and inhale, come up with an open heart. Bring your hands together in Anjali Mudra, a gesture of divine offering and gratitude. Inhale, take your arms back and up. Fill your lungs, exhale, swan dive, empty them completely. Inhale, slide the hands up the legs, flat back. And exhale, let's take the right leg back to the lunge. And step back to downward facing dog. Gently pressing the chest back, spread your fingers. And let's lower to the knees and sink back to child's pose. Big toes together, knees apart, rest the forehead to the mat. I invite you to turn your palms open and cup them and ask the universe for what you need right now, asking the universe for support. And turn the palms down and let's come up onto all fours, your wrists under your shoulders and knees under your hips. Inhale, concave your back ball cow pose. And exhale, gently pull the navel up to the spine for cat pose. So flex the spine. Move in time with your breath. Integrate your cervical spine, your neck, with the rest of your spine. Let's come back to downward facing dog. Let's step the right foot through or walk through. Inhale, slide the hands up the legs for Ada Uttanasana. Exhale, fold in and let go. Release your head and neck. Feel free to bend your knees. Take your hands to your hips and pull back your elbows and inhale, come up with open heart. Bring your hands together at your heart and Jali Mudra. Inhale, take your arms back and up, and exhale, swan dive. Inhale, Ada Uttanasana, nice flat back, and exhale, left leg back, downward facing dog. Spreading your fingers, feel free to bend the knees a little, to have a nice long spine. Lower to your knees and sink back to child's pose. And from here, move your front body to the floor and take your elbows underneath your shoulders for Sphinx Pose. Stretch out your legs. 
So the elbows directly under your shoulders, gently rest the shoulders back, away from the ears, chest open and bright, palms turned down, fingers spread. And with your exhalation, let's turn to look over the right shoulder, lowering the chin towards the shoulder, lengthen the back of your neck. And inhale, come back to center, gaze upwards, exhale, lower the chin to the chest. Inhale, float your head back up and exhale, turn to look over your left shoulder, lowering the chin towards the shoulder. Inhale, back to the center, gently lift the chin, gazing up and exhale, lower the chin back to your chest, dropping the head. And with your next inhalation, floating the head back up to neutral. Let's do a forearm plank. So we're going to curl the toes under, feet hip width apart. So really bracing our forearms and fingers and toes, engaging our belly. And with the inhalation, lift into forearm plank, pressing back through the heel. It heels if you need more support. Lower the knees and still gaining the benefits with, with some additional support. Pause in the pose and breathe easily, soft face and gaze. Exhalation, let's lower down with control. Just pausing in Sphinx pose for a moment. Taking a quality breath. Let's turn to one side for forearm side plank. So for this pose, if you'd like a little more support, you can place the foot in front of the leg. We can have both legs straight, push through the heels and flex back your toes. And with the next inhalation, lift into forearm side plank, perhaps lifting the arms skywards and turning to look up at the hand. And with the next exhalation, lowering down with control and coming back to Sphinx pose. Now if you like to, you can just turn in the opposite way. I'll just swivel on the spot so you can see, or you can do the same. So forearm side plank to the other side. So I'll do the supported version this time. So you can have legs straight or place the foot in front for a little extra support. Push through the heels and flex back the toes of the straight leg. Lift up with your inhalation, lifting the arms skywards, perhaps turn to look up. Keep breathing while you're in the pose. It's activating and strengthening your side abdominals, your obliques. And with the next exhalation, lowering down with control. Rolling back onto the stomach for Sphinx pose. I invite you to take crocodile pose. So one hand on top of the other, resting the forehead on the top hand. Turn the feet outwards and rest here in the centered neck. And from here, Taking the hands under the shoulders and press back to child's pose, resting the bow to the mat. Curl the toes under and lift back to downward facing dog, gently pressing the, the chest back. And from here, bringing the right foot forward or we'll walk through. Inhale, Adha Uttanasta, long spine. And exhale, fold back in, taking your hands to your hips and pulling back your elbows. Inhale, come up with open heart, bring your hands together at your heart. Inhale, take your arms back and up and exhale, swan dive. Inhale, 
Slide the hands up the legs for a halfway lift. And exhale, left leg back. This time, plank pose. Feel free to lower the knees for extra support. Move the body forward and lower with control. And with your inhalation, curl up for Cobra, Bhujangasana. Exhale, downward facing dog. And I invite you to pause here for a few breaths. Inhale, gathering the strength. Exhale, grounding and going deeper into the pose. Check in that your neck is relaxed. With the next inhalation, bring the left foot through. Or walk through. Inhale, Adho Uttanasana, long spine. Exhale, fold back in. Inhale, arms wide this time. Open heart. Lift out from your hips and press the hips forward. And exhale, hands at your heart. Let's step the left leg back. So our hips square to the short end of the mat. And let's bend the right knee so we're in like a warrior one position. Take your right arm out and lift your thumb and align your left thumb with right. So just like an archer, inhale, pull back your left arm, pulling back your imaginary bow and keep your drishti on the right thumb. Exhale, releasing the bow and bringing the thumbs back in line. Inhale, open out. Open across your chest and exhale, bring the thumbs back in line. Be patient with the breath. The breath is guiding the movement here. And let's release the left hand down to the back leg. Open out your right palm and inhale, take the arm skywards for a nice back bend. Heart opens to the sky, grounded through both feet. And with your next exhalation, lift up and release from the pose. So let's step both feet together. This time taking the right leg back, grounding the heel. Oh, I heard a crack. Hips square to the short end of the mat. Bend the left knee so the knee is above the ankle. Lift your left arm, thumb up, and align your right thumb with your left. So just like an archer, inhale, pull back your bow, open across your chest, and exhale, bring the thumbs back in line. The drishti, the focus is on your left thumb, soft gaze and face. Full and even breath, enjoy your breath. And with the next exhalation, lower your right hand to the back leg, open out your left palm, and inhale, take the arm skywards, and right hand slides down the leg. And with the next inhalation, reach up. And exhale, release from the pose. Beautiful. So bring the legs back towards each other. Give them a shake. Step the feet a little bit wider. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Gently pull back your shoulders. Inhale, open your heart to the sky. And exhale, bend the knees. Let's fold forward from the hips. Relax your neck. Rock onto the heels, inhale, come back up. Nice, releasing your hands. So let's move into a balance pose. Ground into your right foot and lift your right arm to the sky. We're going to do Natasha Rasana or Dancer. Catch hold of your left heel. 
And with your inhalation, reach forward and exhale, move into the pose so the, the foot rises behind. Maintain a drishti or focus point on the floor or on the wall ahead. If you fall out, just come straight back in without another thought. Perhaps hold on to the side wall if you need a little support. And with the next inhalation, come back up and exhale, release. Taking the left arm to the sky, ground into the left foot. Reach down, catch hold of your right ankle, bring the knees together. Inhale, reach forward and exhale, move deeper into the pose. Keep the front arm above, parallel to the floor. By one side easier than the other, that's normal. Turn your outer lips upwards. Gentle smile. Change the brain chemistry. And the next inhalation, lift back up. And exhale, release from the pose. Shake it out. Release from the static pose. So let's jump the feet wide and turn the right foot out. Wider than hip width the feet, taking the arms out at shoulder height. Next inhalation, reach through your right arm, take the left arm skywards for Trikonasana. So your left hand will be at your shin or a bit higher. Turn to look up. Right hand rather. <laughs> And with the next inhalation, reach up through the top arm, taking back hand to leg, bend the front leg, and turn the arm up and over for a dancing warrior or reverse warrior. With the next inhalation, lifting the arms up and exhale, float them down at shoulder height into warrior two. Gaze out over your front fingers. Press into your front foot and inhale, straighten the leg. Exhale, relax. Let's take it to the other side. So turning the foot out, reach the arms up, shoulder height. Reach towards the wall, the window, and take Trikonasana. Triangle pose. Strong and steady. Spin open the chest, open the heart. Expand the body. Expand your consciousness. And reach up through the top arm. Reverse warrior, dancing warrior. Bend the front leg. Back hand to leg. Reaching the other arm up and over. Lovely side opening, keeping the back of the neck in line with your spine. Face gently and naturally, face the skywards. No force, just taking the shape. I like the name Dancing Warrior. It reminds me to dance through life. I'm going to run and dance and be free. And reach up through the top arm, exhale, warrior two. Straighten the front leg, turning the foot in. Let's do um, Prasarita Padottanasana. So take your hands to your hips. The feet are parallel. Inhale, lift up from your hips and open your heart to the sky. With the exhalation, gently pull the belly in, hinging from the hips. And place the hands under your shoulders. Inhale, draw your heart forward. Exhale, walk the hands back and fold forward. Relax your neck completely. I invite you to, to do a variation of downward facing dog now. So walking your hands out, keeping the legs where they are, and placing your hands 
and your upper body just like you would in downward facing dog. Spread your fingers and then pressing the chest back. The outer shoulders pull down. Find steadiness and ease in the pose. Soften where you find rigidness or strain. back, heart draws forward, flat back, and fold back in once again for Prasarita Padottanasana. Inhale, walk the hands back out, exhale, hands to your hips, and inhale, strong legs and core, lift back up. So let's turn to one side. It doesn't matter which side, we'll do the other side in just a moment. So squaring your hips to the short end of the mat, we're going to do uh, Pasvottanasana, the intense side stretch pose. So take your hands behind and hold on to your wrists or opposite elbows. Or you can place your hands together in reverse prayer between your shoulder blades. So just checking in with your, your stride, if it's still a bit wide, from when you were in Prasarita Padottanasana, you might like to bring the back leg in a little. So ground through both feet and inhale, lift up your hips and tilt your heart to the sky. And with your exhalation, fold forward over the front leg. Bring the chin in at the end. Just pause in this pose, which requires some balance. encourages us to remain present and focused. Tune into your breath, smooth and even. And with the next inhalation, let's come back up, pressing into the feet, lifting back up. Keeping your hands where you are, just turn your feet on the spot so you're facing the other way. The hips square to the short end of the mat. Press into your feet, inhale, lift up your hips and open your heart to the sky. It's very uplifting to look up. And with your exhalation, let's start to fold over the front leg. Bring your chin in at the end. Pause here. Soft gaze and a drishti bounce your toes or your knee. Your shin. You're grounded, poised in this present moment, free of any worries or doubts. Holding yourself steady. Holding yourself steady on the mat teaches us how to hold steady in our outer life. So let's come up. And exhale, release. Bring the legs together and again shaking it out, letting the prana, the life force energy move through your body. Let's make our way down to the floor. So stand into dust and gracefully lift your arms back and up. Exhale, swan dive. Inhale, slide the hands up the legs, a halfway lift. And let's walk back to downward facing dog. Lower to the knees. You can sink back to child's pose, resting the forehead to the mat. Shasana. So bend your left leg and place the foot to the inner thigh. We can take our hands to lift out from your hips. 
If you find that you're moving back, what you could do is put a rolled up blanket underneath your sit bones to help tilt your pelvis forward. Gently push through the heel and flex the back of the toes of the straight leg. Inhale, reach your arms up high, lift out from your hips. And with your exhalation, reach forward and down. Resting your hands on your foot or on the floor. You may have your hands in front of your, your feet, so they're all different. Just going with what's best for your body today. And with the next inhalation, let's dynamically come out. So moving the arms forwards and up. Exhale, release the arms wide. Straighten out the left leg. Bring the right foot into the inner thigh of the left leg. I invite you to take your hands behind to lift out from your hips. Inhale, lift your arms up. And exhale, move forward and down. Pausing here. With the next inhalation, draw forwards and up. And exhale, release. Let's lift that knee and place it over the leg for a twist. Feel free to stay here or bring your left foot by your right buttock. So we'll take our right arm out in front and move into the twist in this way. So taking the arm behind, at the same time hug your thigh into the chest with your left hand. So you make some adjustments while you're doing this. Inhale, gently lift, nice and tall. And exhale, twist from the navel towards the right. And with the next exhalation, release from the twist. And let's change legs. So this time the left leg over the right, feel free to keep the right leg straight. Or bring that right foot by the left buttock. Round both sitting bones. So let's take our left arm out in front. So it's interesting to try different ways to enter into a pose. So I learned from so many teachers and the most recent teacher um, does his twist in this way, which I think is kind of interesting. So we take the arm behind at the same time as hugging the thigh into the chest, so move into the twist. Gently press your left sit bone down and lift your left collarbone. Twist from your navel. With your exhalation, release from the twist. Lengthen out your legs. And let's roll down onto the back. Bring your knees into the chest. And we're going to do, um, rock from side to side. I'm going to rock all the way onto one side and roll the forehead onto the floor so that you're looking in the opposite direction. So I'll just demonstrate. So rolling onto one side completely and rolling the forehead onto the floor to look in the opposite direction. So it's really nice for the neck. And then rolling over to the other side, rolling the forehead onto the floor, so not disconnecting from the earth, the forehead, as it rolls to in the opposite direction. So using the ground to move into this twist. So roll from side to side with me. Just checking in with your neck, if you feel any discomfort, feel free to opt out in turning your head to the opposite way. It's really nice. Massage the back. 
self-nourishment. Let's do one more to each side. And come back to center. Felt good, hey? So let's pedal the, the legs now, which is a nice way to strengthen the abdominals, and slide the hands up and down the thighs. So reaching one leg out at a time, pedal the legs, and slide the hands up and down the thighs. Keeping the breath flowing. This is a low impact way to mobilize the knees, so great for the knees, and to strengthen our abdominal muscles. So I invite you to move in the opposite direction now, reverse pedaling. And notice how my legs are not completely vertical, so they're out at an angle, about 60 degrees or thereabout. And bring both knees back together. Take a moment to lie in Shavasana. And take some full breaths. From here, I invite you to take shoulder stand. So we'll roll up onto our elbows for half shoulder stand. Or we'll roll up onto your shoulders. So walking the hands up the back into full shoulder stand. If you feel any discomfort in your neck, then come back to half shoulder stand or have all of your back on the floor and lift your legs vertically. It's not recommended if you're menstruating or pregnant. It's a wonderful pose. It's very calming. Turns our world upside down, giving us a new perspective. Improves circulation. And if you'd like to, you can take the legs back to the floor behind for Halasana. Keep your hands on the back if your feet don't reach the floor. But if they do, you can go ahead and release your hands from your back. I have the palms turned down or interlace your fingers as I am. Still check in with your neck if you feel any discomfort or strain. Ease out of the pose. Literally and figuratively looking at myself. Pose for turning inward and reflecting, listening to what the higher self wants to say. So let's ease out using your hands on the back, slowly unroll and come back to Shavasana, just to neutralize the body. Take some easy breaths, relax the body completely. Feel a growing feeling of pleasant steadiness. And from here, bend your legs for Setu Bandhasana or a bridge pose. Walk your feet up to your bottom as close as you can and have the feet hip width apart. 
Slide the hands to the inside of your feet and have the thumbs to the outside. Just another way of um, doing the pose. If you have a way that you like to do, go ahead, perhaps your hands are turned down on the floor. Little changes to how you view or take a pose can really um, enliven your practice, give you a new perspective. Just little changes can do that. And we release that that feeling that I'm am I doing it right or am I doing it wrong? Because there's no one way in doing these asanas. We know we're doing it wrong if we're feeling pain. So we're always listening to the body. Press into the feet and lift your hips to the sky. Bring the outer shoulders towards each other, perhaps. Or just focusing on the lifting of the hips. Exhalation, lower down slowly. Enjoy the slow release. Rest at the bottom. Let's do one more. Press into your feet and lift your hips. It's a great pose for lower back health. Activating our thighs, our quadriceps, energizing the front body. Literally building bridges to new areas in our life. And let's lower down slowly. And lengthen out your legs, flop the feet in and out, giving the legs a good wobble. Bend your elbows and circle your wrists in one direction. And circle them back in the opposite direction. Lift your elbows and shake your hands. And relax completely. Take Shavasana, your version of Shavasana, perhaps your legs are bent. I invite you to practice the full yogic breath. So if you'd like to, you can place one hand on your belly and one hand on your chest. Breathe in and out through your nostrils. Deep, even breaths without strain. Close down your eyes. Inhale, breathe in from your belly. Let the breath move up to your ribs as they move out. And let the breath travel up further to your chest and collarbones. They lift. Exhale, let the breath flow from your collarbones and chest. Then to your ribs, they move back to where they were and to your lower belly, it hollows out. So the full yogic breath is also known as a three chamber breath. You have a sense of these three chambers as you breathe, belly, ribs, chest, using your hands to feel it. Inhale, belly, ribs, chest, collarbones. Exhale, collarbones, chest, lower belly. Breathing without strain, smooth and even. Maharaja Pranayam, the full yogic breath. Deep breathing is very good for our health. It changes the chemical landscape of our body to improve health. Let's practice three more Maharaja Pranayam.
breathing to its natural pace. Relax your arms by your side, turn your palms open. Relax your body completely, soften your face. Release your jaw. Consciously relax your neck and throat. Soften the shoulders away from your ears. Relax the muscles either side of your spine. Take your attention down your arms. Allow them to be heavy. Soften the muscles. Loosen the elbows, wrists and fingers. Heighten your awareness to the sensations in the palms of your hands. Relax across your chest, your heart space. Soften your upper and lower abdomen. Let go. Loosen your hips and allow your pelvis and hips to sink down to the earth. Relax your thighs, letting the muscles melt off the bone. Loosen your knees and relax the area behind your knees. Allow the calf muscles to soften and expand along the mat. Loosen your ankles. Loosen every toe. Let your feet fall away from each other with gravity. Let your legs be heavy. Let your body sink into the earth, fully supported and safe. Allow the mind to quiet. All this well. Feel free to stay a little longer or start to awaken your body by taking two deeper breaths. With your fingers and toes and gently roll your head from one side to the other. into your chest, gently rock from side to side, roll on to your right side and just pause for a moment, your head resting on your arm. And when you're ready, press up to a seated position, keep your eyes closed just a moment more. Maintaining that nice quiet space that you've cultivated from your yoga practice. A space that's always available to us. It's our own inner sanctuary, our own garden of Eden. So let's seal the practice with the sound of Om and Shanti, Shanti, Shanti Hi. Shanti means peace in Sanskrit. Take an inhalation from your belly. Together at your heart. Now your head 
to your heart. Namaste.